In this Unity tutorial, we are going to explore how we can add procedurally generated rivers on our procedurally generated map using what is known as Perlin Worms. The idea here is that we want our rivers to start at the peak of a mountain and go towards a body of water that is downhill. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. Before we start, Big thanks to all the Patreons that are supporting me, thanks to you guys I can make more Unity tutorials. Ok, let's start. Now what are Perlin Worms? If you are already familiar with Random Walk, this is pretty similar concept. We have our Random Walk and the Random Walk works like this. We get a direction that is a random between the directions that we provide and it starts moving in this direction one step at a time. Now, with random walk there is an issue where it can go backwards, which step doesn't add anything to our procedurally generated content. Now, this is not a great idea to use for procedurally generated rivers. Instead, we want to use Perlin noise to drive our random walk. Now, the advantage of Perlin noise is that the nearby values are smooth. So we go from this dark area smoothly towards this white area and so on. The pearly noise is used often for procedurally generating terrain, but it can also be used for perlin worms. And perlin worms are nothing more than a random walk that uses perlin noise values to be selecting the direction of movement. Now it can also be used in 3D, but in our 2D example, we are going to simply generate our noise using in Unity mathf.perlin noise, and we are going to generate the perlin noise based on the current position that we are on. So we are going to generate based on the noise, which is between 0 and 1, a degree value, which will be between minus 90 and 90 for example, so we will map the noise into the degrees, and then we are going to generate a direction based on the degrees by rotating our, for example, vector 2.right by those uh, number of degrees. And we are going to perform step one by one in the random direction. And this smoothness will be great to generate something like a river that actually meanders around the terrain until it reaches the body of water at the lower parts of our terrain. As always, there will be a link to the GitHub repository in the description of this video, where you can find the starter project if you want to follow along, and the end project if you want to check the results. All you need to do is to create a 2D project from the template in Unity. I'm using Unity 2020.3, and you should be able to import the package and open up the scene called Perlin Worms. When you run it, you will have a map procedurally generated using Perlin noise appearing in your game window. You can select layers and uncheck the UI eye icon to disable the UI so you can see it more clearly in the scene view. Now for this project we are using the sprites from the Kenny Assets voxel pack so you can check it out. Now I have provided you with a couple of scripts. The noise settings are the settings for generating the noise. I have a specific video about using Perlin noise to generate a map. You can check it out, there will be a link in the top right corner of this video. We have noise helper which contains a method to generate our multi-octave uh, Perlin noise and a method to uh, put our value in a specific range. So noise value is between 0 and 1 and when we want to convert it to our degrees we want to convert it to the range of minus 90 to 90 for example. Next we have our map renderer which simply allows us to paint on our tile map since we are using Unity tile maps to generate our map and it contains some methods that allow us to clear the map and to paint tiles onto our tile map. The last script is our map generator which is basically uh, responsible for generating our map. Now in our hierarchy in the map generator object we have this map generator mono behavior. It contains the reference to our map render, it contains the different uh, tile base objects. So we have grass tile, water tile, hill tile that we want to paint on our tile map. We have the map size and we have the map settings which are simply the noise settings to generate our map. You can play around with those and reset the map to generate a different map. For example with one octave you can see that this is a bit less refined compared to the result with the five octaves. Now we have also the hill height, snow height and water height. 
those are the threshold values so if the noise value is above 0.55 we want to place there the stone tile if this is above 0.7 we want to paint there snow and if it is below 0.25 we want to create water there so this is this terrain is really low now as you can see from the output of our procedurally generated map you we can see that we have multiple peaks that contain snow and what i would like to do is to generate rivers that goes down from those peaks towards the nearest body of water so first of all i would like to find out the points that are highest and the point that are lowest since those will be the points where we want to start and end our rivers so in this case we want to find what is known as local maxima and minima and those are the points uh, which have all the neighbors with a specific value for a local maxima we want every neighbor of our tile so for this specific tile we want all the neighbors to have a value of noise lower than the value of our uh, tile that we consider now for the max value for uh, example for our snow peaks uh, let's say that this value of the noise has the highest value from its neighbors from its nearby neighbors and this will make this point here a local maximum point so this is why in our map generator script we have saved our noise values that we have calculated when we are preparing our map to a 2d float array okay so what i will want to do is stop the game and i want to go to our noise helper script and let's open it up now in the script we have our sum noise which is the method that generates our noise and the range map method that range uh, that maps our value into a different range and i will paste the methods that we will use to generate our local minimas and maximas so basically we are going to get the uh, float 2d value of our noise values which i call noise map the method is called find local maxima so we are looking for the local maxima and it will return a list of vector 2 ints which are the maximas that we have found we generate a new list here and next we look for each tile on our tile map so for each noise value on our in our noise map and we are getting the length 0 for x and get length 1 for y now we get the noise value and we are going to check the neighbors and we are going to pass the x value and y value the noise map which is our float to the array and we are going to pass to our check neighbors which is a method below a func delegate if you want to learn more about delegates i have a specific video about understanding lambda expressions and delegates there will be a link in the top right corner of this video the func delegate allows us to pass a method here and it will return a bool value so the definition of the method should be that it takes float value and it returns a bool value and this is the fail condition so we are going to look for each var direction in our directions since we do not have it i will create a static list of directions so let me paste it above our check neighbors and those will be a static list of vector to int and those are all the directions so all eight directions so north northeast east southeast south southwest west and northwest if we have those directions then we can check the neighbors in each direction now the github repository will contain all the scripts for this video so you can simply copy the methods from there if you don't want to type them we are looping for each direction and we are generating simply new position based on the current position xy plus the xy of the direction that we have selected now if it is in range of our tile map so if it is in range of the map that we have generated we will compare the value of the noise if it is not we are simply going to continue assuming that this point is below our value if the value is in range we are going to check our fail condition since we are going to use the check neighbors method for finding local maximas and minimas for local maximas we want to basically check if the noise of our neighbor is less than the noise of our current tile if it is higher this means that our current tile is not a local maxima and we return false so in our find local maxima the condition will be a lambda expression 
and take the in the neighbor noise value and check if the neighbor noise value is greater than noise value of the current tile. If it is greater, then the fail condition should be triggered as true. If the no neighbor noise value is equal or less than the noise value for the current tile, this means that we are good to go and we can potentially find a local maximum here. And if we do, we are simply adding this position as a vector to int to our maximas list of vector to int. Now the same happens for the local minima, but instead we change the condition here. Now to use those methods, we will go to our map generator script. So here at the top, we have a tile base called the max post tile, and we are going to use the lava tile to depict the maximas and minimas. And to do this, we are going to paste at the bottom of this class new methods. One will be show maximas and one will be show minimas. And all it will do is it will get the result from our noise helper dot find local maxima. And those are static methods, so we can call them from any script. And we are going to pass our noise map that we have generated. And for each value in our results, we are going to call map render dot set tile to item x item y and we are going to pass the max post tile which is the lava tile so we can see where are the local maximas we are going to do the same for the minimas by calling the find local minima method on our noise helper okay i will stop the game and i have prepared a couple of buttons here so i will select our show maximas button i will add an on click event i will drag the map generator and select map generator and we have show maximas and show minimas the same thing add an uh, event we're going to drag our map generator and select the function map generator show minimas now if i press play we should be able to select our show minimas and as you can see the lava tiles were created in different positions of our map and you can see that most of those are in the bodies of water but there are also local maximas in our grass as well as in our rock so this means that the generating local maximas is not enough as well we can click reset map to reset the map and select show maximas and most of the maximas should be in the snowy area and rock area but again many local maximas are in the range of the grass tiles so instead we are going to stop it and we are going to go back to our map generator script now to filter those results, we are going to use the where from linked library. You will need to type using system.link at the top of our class. And first of all, we are going to take the result that we get and we are going to select all the points where our position is such that the noise map position X and Y is greater than the snow heights. So basically we filter the results, then we want to order those positions in the ascending order and we only want to take 20 points from our result and we want to convert it to a list or we do not have to exactly convert it to a list but we can do that as well and the same thing we want to do in the show minimas we want to select only the points where position is uh, the noise of the position is less than water height so save the script and let's go back to unity okay i will start the game and i will select show maximas and as you can see, most of the red dots are gone and only the red dots that are in the snowy area or in the mountainous area shows up. So this is good result. Now let's reset them up and let's see the sh local minimas. And as you can see again, local minimas are all in the bodies of water. Okay, so basically what we can do is now generate our minimas and maximas. So we have our starting points and the end point for our rivers. In the next video, we are going to write our Perlin worm script, so it will generate a path from our peak of the mountain towards the body of the water in a way that it looks organic. Okay, see you in the next video.